G'day everyone, today we are about an hour outside Melbourne in the beautiful Dandenong Ranges at the Puffing Billy Railway. Today we're going to take a look around Puffing Billy both on and off the train. Now this line is 25 kilometres from Belgrave to Gembrook, weaving through some amazing scenery. We'll also take a look at what there is to do out here, whether you're riding the train or whether you're chasing the train. We're going to visit the museum at Menzies Creek as well as the brand new or newly opened at least at time of filming this video uh, visitors information center at lakeside so let's get into it so a very quick overview and brief history of puffing billy the railway is a two foot six inch gauge narrow gauge railway opened in 1900 which originally ran from upper Ferntree gully to gembrook until 1958 the railway became an operating tourist railway from 1962 from belgrave to menzies creek then gradually extended over the remainder of the original line through to Clementus to Emerald in 1965 and Lakeside in 1975 before reaching Gembrook, which was completed in 1998. Now getting to Puffing Billy is very easy with a metro rail connection from the CBD as well as bus options and it is very accessible by car. Puffing Billy leaves Belgrave Station and quickly crosses the iconic Monbulk Creek Bridge. Then into the Dandenong Ranges. First major stop on the line is Menzies Creek. Here you'll find an extremely well presented Puffing Billy Museum. You'll find locomotives and rolling stock in different stages of preservation, as well as other steam engines, railway artifacts and many more interesting items. They do have some of my favourite locomotives, that being some geared locomotives, the Shea and the Climax locomotives, as well as this very interesting broad gauge piggyback wagon. Now, I should point out that if you are planning on riding the train, you may not have time to visit all the places that I mentioned in this video. And I should also make mention that this was shot over two different visits to the railway. At station you have the opportunity to see the boiler of a Garrett locomotive as well as some not abandoned but derelict rolling stock.
The next station along the line is Emerald, where you can see examples of more stored rolling stock in varying conditions, as well as a turntable and a goods shed, although none of these are open to the public. Although not a regular stop, the train then passes Nobelis Siding. The Nobelis Nursery was once the largest plant nursery in the Southern Hemisphere, with over 200,000 trees grown on 180 hectares. Nowadays, the packing shed is used as a function centre. A little further along, you'll arrive at Lakeside, which I guess is the most popular stop on Puffing Billy. Here you'll find a beautiful lake surrounded by a really nice park. As well as that, you have the newly opened and very impressive visitor centre, where you can get a meal, souvenirs, as well as being able to check out some more railway items, including NA3. Now the locomotives at Puffing Billy are the famous NA class locomotives. As well as that, they do have some other locomotives that they use. They have two Garretts, one Victorian Railways G class and one South African NGG 16. As well as that, they have the Climax and three X Melbourne Metropolitan Gas Company locomotives. The railway also operates three diesel locomotives which are used on days of total fire ban. These locomotives are former Tasmanian and Queensland Railways narrow gauge locomotives that were re-gauged to 2 foot 6 inch for the purpose of being used at Puffing Billy. They also have other events like Day Out with Thomas, but that's something I'll cover in another video. Also at Lakeside they have a model railway, which is touted as Australia's biggest model railway. Although I don't have any footage of it, it does need a serious amount of work. And well, it wasn't anything to really make mention of but I will say it's an extremely lacklustre toy train set. I hope that they can bring it up to the standard of the rest of the railway one day. Moving along, the train then makes its way to Gembrook, first passing through the township of Cockatoo, then Fielder, and then on to Gembrook.
Now, Jambrook, like many towns in the Dandenongs, is extremely picturesque and a great place to kill the hour and a half or so you get there before the train heads back. Now, I've got a couple of suggestions for lunch. If you're after a quiet cafe to have a sit and a coffee, try Spencer's store. The coffee was really good. However, if you're after a really great dining experience, check out The Independent. The food and drinks are 10 out of 10 in an excellent modern setting. I've been here a couple of times, as when I generally ride Puffing Billy, it's for a special event, like my birthday earlier this year. And yeah, The Independent is grouse, and it's somewhere I'd definitely dine at again. Now, a fun little thing at Jembrook is round at the fire station, and I'm hoping someone watching can answer this question. About 50 to 100 metres from the Jembrook station, there is a set of tracks in their driveway. And I don't know what the story is behind it, so if you do know, please leave it in the comments section below. Is this potentially an extension to Puffing Billy? Maybe one day. Now the train leaves Jambrook at around 3 p.m. and heads back to Belgrave, taking a little under two hours to complete the journey. And in my opinion, it's an excellent way to spend a day. All right, so that was our day at Puffing Billy, both on and off the train, with everything you can do and see out here when you've come to visit. Now, if you're not planning on riding this train, of course, something I've mentioned before, these kind of organizations don't run on nice pictures and videos. So if you are coming out here, definitely stop off at any of their stations that sell merchandise and grab something, even if it's a cup of coffee. That all goes towards supporting these kind of places so they can stay open for all of us to enjoy well into the future. Now, if you do want to check out any more information about Puffing Billy, I will leave all the appropriate links down below, as well as links to me and my photos and other videos and things like that, which, yeah, be great if you could check them out. So, if you're like me and have been coming here for the last 30 years and you really enjoy it, tell me what you love most about coming to Puffing Billy, or perhaps you haven't been here and it is somewhere you'd like to come and visit. If so, leave me some feedback on this video. Anyway, until next time, Hooroo!